What is going on, Omi fam and VV fam? It is Foster, and I have a very special live today. I am joined by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Reese Geller and from Ecomi. How you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Just good, uh, man. caffeinated, ready to go. That's good. So, <laughs> so for those of for those that are watching that don't know right now, you are actually back home, I believe, right? So, I am. It is yeah. currently early in the morning for you, I gather. I think 8 a.m. Yep, 8 a.m. on a Sunday. 8 a.m. on a Sunday. So you're you're living, I mean, you're you're truly in the future. I mean, That's, you're you're living through time I haven't even seen yet. So I, you talk about having all the answers. I mean, this like guys, there you go. You've heard it here first. Reese is in the future. So <laughs> this is how you do it. You just fly to the future and then come That's, back with all the answers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, for what it's worth, I, I know I reached out to you and uh, you know. I, I very much appreciate you doing this, especially considering I, I know you're back home, you're with family, it's the weekend, you're on vacation. So the fact that you're willing to set some time aside for for me and the Omi fam to kind of go over some of these uh, comments and questions and clarifications that we've seen since the OUP article came out, I know it means the world to everyone that uh, that you're taking the time to do this. So before we get started on all the, all the hardball questions I got prepared, uh, it, it is very much appreciated that you are taking the time to do this. So no thank worries. you very much for that. No worries. And uh, fam, thank you so much for showing up. I mean, we got 176 people watching live right now. I know we had over 100 people waiting in the waiting room before this even got started. Uh, I will do my best to incorporate as many questions from the chat as possible. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I put out a tweet yesterday asking for feedback from the community about this uh, live that I was going to be doing. And I, I had like 150 responses. Uh, so what I've done is, is summarize them as best as I could oh. into... Uh, different categories and I'll be going over all of them with Reese. Uh, we have about an hour to an hour and a half with them. So um, if you haven't heard your question come up yet, give me a few minutes to kind of get through the meat and potatoes. And then if I still haven't hit on something, once we get to a certain point, feel free to throw your comments down below, but obviously it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me today to keep up with the comment section uh, more so than what I would normally like to, just because there's just so many people in here, which is fantastic. And uh, <laughs> shout out to real Randy Chavez when drivable Reese. <laughs> Hey, Randy. So, <laughs> so, I, that, so would you become the collectible and we would ride you? or Because that's a little... It's just me driving around for days. Yeah, it's just you driving. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, make you an NPC or something. I love it. I love it. But yeah, so thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. And like I said, we'll be pulling out questions as best as I can uh, throughout it. So uh, we know you're on vacation right now. You're taking the time for us. I appreciate that. Get that one out of the way. Uh, a couple questions outside of OUP, because obviously that's going to be the meat and potatoes what we're talking about today. But uh, there's some other just kind of lingering things in the community that I think people are just curious about. And maybe you have updates, maybe you don't. Um, mm -hmm. IMX migration, uh, not looking for a specific date, obviously, on the migration to Immutable. But do we know how things are looking? I know some people in the community have been sharing some posts indicating that immutable me and i you may not be able to comment on this but that immutable has been having a little bit of an issue scaling certain things on their platform and i mean in in akomi's defense it seems that people are saying you know it's not so much on your end more so than it is on immutable i know you guys you know have done a, a pretty good job about not looking to throw other companies under the bus and stuff and and i respect that but is it fair to say that on your end, you guys are pretty much ready to go with all that, and some last-minute pieces just need to fall into place. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've uh, we've been pretty close to ready for for quite a while. Okay. Um, yes, but so as you said, I can't really comment on the things that happened in the background. Yeah, obviously, immutable is quite a new protocol. Layer twos are quite a new evolution in this space, um, and and unfortunately, you know, there are more hiccups than than you would hope for when when you're making a transition like this um, as a startup. I mean, with Immutable as a startup, everyone's still kind of in this stage of establishing how they want to present their business and, and yeah. the, the sort of contractual obligations there as well. Um, yeah. Because obviously, you know, once we mint on that platform, they have some sort of power or control over our assets and, and things right. that are happening. So there has to be, you know, everything has to be very, not regimented necessarily, but but you know, the T's have to be crossed, the I's have to be dotted, everyone has to be on the same page for these things, especially for us dealing with the biggest IP in the world. Uh, no, 
De definitely. So obviously we're not, we're not looking for timeframes at this point. We get that there's, you know, or at least I think most people understand that there's obviously things that work in the back end, and that you guys will do the best to keep us posted uh, as much as you can about the things that we can be kept posted on. With that being said though, once the migration for phase two is completed and all the collectibles are reminted on the platform, are we expecting almost immediately that at least some of the individual licensed IP from let's say like I won't throw out specific artist names, but we'll just say artist IP. Should we expect that almost immediately we will be able to have some of those become interoperable, or is there still like a you know a, a relative window that we may run into about being? Able it, to it should happen more. relatively quickly, especially okay. as I've always been under the assumption for the um, the more independent artists because it's it's just easier for them to be reflexive yeah. with what we're doing. So it should happen, yeah, relatively quickly now. I'm going to be honest, I haven't stayed as up to date with Immutable. I don't think that they're integrated into OpenSea yet. Have you? I haven't seen anything about them being directly integrated into OpenSea. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm sure those talks are in place. And then, of course, uh, with Coinbase being a sponsor of Immutable, I would imagine that when Coinbase NFT kind of gets up and running, it'll be integrated as well. But no, I haven't seen anything come up immediately about that currently. Yeah, yeah, that's my assumption too. And I probably worded that the wrong way. I think it's... um. It's more OpenSea will launch on Immutable than Immutable integrating into OpenSea. Right? Okay, yeah. That's... I think they're, um, you know, they're launching on Optimism now, maybe, or okay. they're looking to move to Arbitrum. So it's we're actually kind of seeing this evolution where all of these apps, essentially, if you want to consider, you know, OpenSea an app, yep. will launch on a number of different chains as opposed to the opposite right. of integration. So it's yeah, I think that's nope. where the tech comes in. That makes perfect sense. And thank you so much, uh, Mark, for the $5 super chat. Uh, probably more of a question for Trevor, but I don't know if Reese can provide any speculation on that. What's the deal with Elsa's foot? <laughs> I really like the word shizzle. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I did ask about that. I think it's a mapping thing, um, okay. but uh, who knows? Maybe they'll turn it into a pen now that it looks like one. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Cool, man. Cool, cool. And Pongo, I see your question here. We'll get into that uh, in a little bit. I'm just going to uh, bash through a couple things here quickly, but I, I have seen your question. It is a question that I do have written down. So thank you so much for the super chat. That is a great question and we will get to it for sure. Um, okay. So that's IMX migration. I, I think that that's fairly straightforward. I think hopefully most people understand that, you know, it's in everyone's best interest for this to be completed. Like, I don't think you guys are sitting on your hands just for the sake of, right? Like, I, I hope most people recognize that. And, and, you know, hopefully, you know, I think we have an AMA coming up this Thursday. It'll and be this I, week. Yeah. And I, and hopefully we'll get some updates on that. But uh, short of that, uh, before the, um, before that AMA on Thursday, uh, another community sentiment that I just wanted to share, and we'll see where we're at with things, is the MTL integration. So mm -hmm. I know Dan mentioned in the most recent AMA that they were, you guys were looking at starting beta testing uh, at some point, kind of it rolling into this weekend. Are you able to comment at this point as to whether or not that's been started or if we're planning to start it at a specific date? Yeah, I can see the devs testing it at the moment. Yeah, Excellent. I get all their, all their notifications. So they're all testing. I think it's still in staging at the moment, um, but in the next week or two or whenever they're happy for that to roll out to production, I think what we'll see in the app or in their web wallet, <clears throat> most people will see the the payout button, but it will be grayed out basically. Or, uh, you know, okay. It won't be available um, as we'll, you know, we're really going to progressively roll it out. You know, it starts with devs and Dan, then they'll probably bring me in and some of the early testers that helped us out and then it'll, Makes it'll sense. flow out from there. Yeah. Fair enough. So obviously if you haven't received any uh, communication from Ecomi and you see that button on your screen, you're probably not eligible for it. So it's not a glitch. If it's grayed out, it, it you just don't have access to it yet. And if you don't have access to it, be sure to message Alex and uh, heckle <laughs> the VP Twitter. That's it. That's it. He doesn't, he doesn't get a weekend. If you don't get a weekend, he doesn't get a weekend. That's that's it. That's it. So we put that message out. No, that's perfect. So I wanted to obviously cover uh, a few of those major um, topics that I've just seen swirling around in the community. And then I've also seen uh, some things come up just about um, we've seen recently the second that Facebook rebranded to Meta, we saw, uh, you know, Sandbox, Decentraland, you know, uh, Block, all of these metaverse tokens kind of pump off. But when you go on CoinGecko and some of the other uh, platforms that list the different cryptos, we see that OMI is not actually listed as a metaverse token, which granted makes sense. We don't have a metaverse currently. Do But do we know if that will be integrated at some point? <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. Look, the way we've always approached this, uh, and we did the same with VB, you know, there wasn't that many people around then that, that can probably attest to this, but we didn't release any details about VB until it was ready to launch. Um, right. Now, the reason for that was twofold. One, we can't leverage people's IP to to promote our products in you know before they're live essentially okay um, so the vv verse even though it's an extension of vv is probably better to consider as a separate product um makes sense that, that kind of thing so same deal we, we won't be able to leverage that ip to advertise a product that isn't live yet um and you know on the, on the same vein we don't want to give away our secrets basically no, I mean, yeah it makes it, it'd be like if a company that actually secured pokemon but couldn't confirm that they had secured pokemon so they couldn't talk about securing pokemon i'm just as a just as a pure hypothetical like you wouldn't you wouldn't if you secured pokemon you wouldn't use the fact that you secured pokemon until you could announce that you secured pokemon exactly and once again not a confirmation of pokemon but just, not just, at an, all. Example. Not just at an example all. just had to sneak it in there hey man you, you, you gotta shoot your shot right you gotta shoot your shot <laughs> I don't. Unfortunately, I'm not like hello. Okay, I don't have any little little figurines that I can hold up and just sneak on the screen. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work it in where I can work it in. So yeah, that's, that's it. Good. I wish I had a little troll figurine. <laughs> yeah, <that>. seriously. <laughs> seriously. Um. So we've heard some announcements about third party Omi integration. I know you're mm -hmm. obviously probably not at the point yet where you could say, "Hey, Omi is going to be on this platform or this platform." But can we expect that? with the OMI utility program, there will be any overlap with third-party integration and staking on those platforms or anything in that regard? Or for now, is it safe to say it's going to be specific to VV? Yeah, I think for now, specific to VV. Um, to be honest, I was very surprised to hear them say that in the AMA. <laughs> you know, I thought we'd be keeping that one a little closer too. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, it's out there now. So no, I think at least my current understanding, any integration of OMI into another platform or, or protocol would probably be used more as a currency there than, than on ours. Now, Makes sense. Dan and Dave, I said, well, we're all incredibly ambitious people. Um, and I think based on the numbers, we probably have the biggest NFT platform at the moment. Uh, so, you know, we, we might be able to get to a point where OMI becomes the NFT token, you know. Well, yeah, it, it becomes the ETH of, you know, like how on OpenSea yeah. you use ETH to transact for all different types of NFT projects. Omi could conceivably one day become the token that many people use, you know, that isn't $4,000 for one token. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and I mean, once Omi's ERC20, and we have the web platform and, and things like that live, you know, we can enable swaps between ETH and Omi if you want to then use that to right. purchase and, and those kind of things or between Tether maybe or, or things like that because it's a much easier bridge for, for people to understand. Yeah. Um, so not only are we looking to integrate OMI into other platforms and protocols, we're also aiming to accept other, you know, other payment methods that would swap into OMI and, and make things more accessible on ours. Wow. And that would be likely facilitated directly by the MTL on the web platform, I would imagine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Like that. So, so that actually rolls perfectly into kind of the next sense because it sounds like obviously there's a lot of a lot of projects and a lot of things that the team is working on. And I mean, to your guys' credit, you do a great job of keeping people posted and in the loop about the things that you guys are working on. So every you know two weeks we're we're, we're having AMAs. You know, Alex is in spaces. You're taking the time to have these conversations uh, with people in the community. Uh, everyone does a great job of that, but. If I was to direct someone that is not native to the project to kind of say, hey, here's where we're going, there's no, at least in my mind, a, a very definitive like, hey, here's a document or a roadmap of what they're intending to do. Now, I know you guys had a roadmap that you had released kind of back in the day, uh, but nothing's really been, or at least that I've seen, been formally updated recently. Do you guys intend to release some form of roadmap or something to kind of show people that are, because I mean, like you said, once we flip the switch and an MTL facilitates OMB to NFT, like people are going to want to see what all of these integrations are and, and kind of make those decisions. Do you guys have that kind of as a, a plan in the back burner somewhere? Yeah. So earlier in the year, that was absolutely my intention. You know, we, we released a Q1 update with a bit of a roadmap, development roadmap, and, and I think we had a... Another one with, um, you know, the, the licenses that were coming out, things like that. Uh, and then we learned very quickly, at least on the licensing side, that that stuff changes on a dime. Uh, <laughs> and anything we put 
people hold us to, you know, and, and the development yeah. timeline was, was kind of the same, right? So we had all these things laid out that we were going to bring out in the first quarter or, or around then. And then obviously that huge user growth meant we literally had to rebuild the app um, and, and expand the team and, and scale that way. So now that we are starting to get all these integrations into place and, and the development work has caught up, uh, yeah, I, I personally would love to have something like that out because it would it helps me basically. Sure. <laughs> you know? Well, and you can you can just direct everyone. Hey, you have a question? Look at this document. Hey, you have a question? Look at this document. The answer is there, right? It's in one spot, and we can just kind of. And even for us, I think as content creators, you know, people will ask the same kind of eight to ten questions over and over. And it's it's one thing for us to give our answer or interpretation, but it's another thing entirely to be like, you know, vv dot or medium dot com, whatever. Like, here's the exact article. Here's what you need to know. So. No, yeah, I think I think that that would be great. Uh, Kendall brings up a question here, and it was kind of in relation to our previous uh, topic. So we know that certain licenses should be interoperable fairly quickly after we migrate over to Immutable. Um, for the licenses that aren't immediately interoperable, to clarify for everyone that's watching, every NFT is being reminted on Ethereum via Immutable X. They just may not be able to be listed anywhere outside of VB. Is that is that kind of sum it up? Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. So I mean even that system <clears throat> to to be able to restrict some of these these NFTs from being sent from the app. You know, like there's a lot of dev work there that that has to alter some contracts and and you know like there has to be that sort of way to enable it. Um yeah. so you know I guess in its simplest sense if you want to think about it like some will be able to flick the switch on and you'll send them out and some you won't. That's that's kind of how that that will play out. But every single NFT that we currently have created that is on the platform will absolutely be reminted all at the same time. You know when that takes nice. place. Okay. Um, yeah, the the restriction will be more on what can and can't leave the platform. Leave the platform itself. Great. And uh, Luke, I saw your super chat as well. Uh, we're definitely going to get into the benefits of staking and possibly some more staking tiers and things like that in a few moments. I just didn't want you to think that I forgot about you. Um, I've thrown a couple of hardball questions at you, so I'm going to take one that I thought was very amusing uh, that was made in my post. So, what kind of shampoo do you use? <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I love this question. It cracks me up. Uh, <laughs> Because I move around so much, I literally use whatever is available in my bathroom or anyone else's bathroom or the hotel bathroom or the ocean or <laughs> whatever's there. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't subscribe to one particular hair okay. care brand. Okay. Yeah. And then and not to put you on, a, on the spot because your boss may actually listen to this at some point, but do you think you have nicer hair than David? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no. You know what? I had to think about that. It's, uh, it's, yeah. you, I mean, you got a nice head of hair, but you got to give credit where credit is due. Right? Oh, I mean, yeah. the, the, the Honestly, man. my hair, I swear at the start of this year, my hairline was down here. I had the David New <laughs> hairline and all the when Pokemons have just receded it every time. Oh, you know? no. You're going to look like Gollum in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Okay. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Uh, so Seth asks, as a bullish Omi homie, I am struggling to understand why third parties would be incentivized to use Omi over any other crypto like ETH thoughts. Now I know you haven't announced any partnerships yet, so there may not, there, there's only so much that you can maybe answer this question, but um, you know, off the top of your head, is there any kind of generalized thoughts as to why you think another platform would want to use Omi? Could it be something as simple as the fees would be less than using Ethereum or, or something like that? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, there's those kind of rudimentary reasons, but um, it's actually really difficult to create your own token, run a token sale, get people to see the value in that, especially if it's before you have a product live. I mean, we did it and I would not want to do it again, right? So it's, yeah. you know, I, I guess it's, really, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, these other platforms launch and they can all use ETH as a universal currency, right? So if we really do aim at Omi being the universal NFT currency or, or something to that effect, um, it's, it's easier to integrate a token that already exists, you know, and, and for us, obviously great exposure for the token. We have the business development fund that is designed to help us permeate further into the industry. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, I'd, I'd say that would be the, the core incentive. Now, obviously to, for us as a company to incentivize those things, yeah, sure, there'd, there'd be some sort of agreement or deal in place that would make it worth their while to use our currency instead of, of course. sand or something else, you know, so yeah. it's... Uh, 
yeah this, no that's this. that's good i think it's it's going to be uh you know a nice uh a nice a nice thing to look forward to so I, i'm very much looking forward to that so no that, that that's awesome that's awesome okay so i feel like that was most of the questions that i wanted to get out of non-related oup questions and now i can start throwing some 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 questions at you so i I know that you've seen it because I've seen it a hundred times and you're tagged in all the things that I've been tagged in for this. So <laughs> the one thing that the community really wants to know is can Omi to NFT be made available to everyone? So right. of course, as for people that don't know right now, the current OUP version 0.1 only allows tier two and three stakers to access the OMI to NFT transactions. So everyone would like to see everyone be able to access that. So do you have any any thoughts on that or? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I guess the intention when we were designing this and, I, and part of the point of staking is to incentivize or encourage you to fill your OMI bag to get that, that feature, right? So we decided we'd put it at tier two um, because then to access that, you know that everybody has to lock up X amount of OMI, right? Right. It also means when transacting with OMI, <clears throat> like if I'm selling you a collectible, receiving OMI, then I, I need to cash that out. Well, then I might need to go and sell that OMI to get more gems, to buy more collectibles or, or to do what I want. So by guaranteeing that there is an allocation of OMI being staked or, or held out of circulation, it helps to balance that, that out. That's a very good point. Uh, which is kind of, <clears throat> that was the intention there. Now, one of the suggestions that I've seen that I really like is maybe we can make it available to to everybody or to T1, but they pay a higher fee, a yes. higher burn fee to transact. Um, no, I really like that idea, but if you're losing a portion of your OMI every time you're transacting and it is five or 10%, your chances of actually getting to that higher tier where you pay less fees are, are being reduced every time you transact in the token. Right. So it disincentivizes use instead of incentivizing. Well, um, exactly. and, then, and then you just at that point you're just better to use gems right because like right. you said if, you, if you're losing an extra 10 percent that you're not losing by using gems i mean it's great like i want to see omi burn as much as the next person but i'm not going to give up an extra hundred dollars for every purchase that i make just to watch omi burn like that yeah, yeah. right yeah, yeah. So. so so you know as i'm sure people understand this whole system really is trying to find that fine balance between incentivization token mechanics you know and 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 giving people that chance to progress through those tiers so that they can achieve those those higher benefits. Now, it's it's a possibility, right? And, and I'm sure we can discuss this more with Dan in the AMA during the week, and, and I'll talk to him earlier in the week anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. At the moment, it, it could work. It, it could work. Uh, but we, we just need to make sure that the incentives are aligned. To the point where well, can. and like you said, so it's, it's not about... And, and that's the balance, right? You can't you can't add a fee for using one and then not offset it for another. So one of the community suggestions, so for those of you that are watching right now, shout out to the almost 500 people watching. That's absolutely incredible. Um, I wrote down 30 points and some of them were questions and then some of them were suggestions from the community. So mm -hmm. a couple of people mentioned, and I actually shout out to Brock McBlockchain, uh, who was kind of the first person that I saw reach out to me about this. And then some other people kind of seconded it. Uh, what about adding an additional one to 2% fee for all secondary market sales, whether the purchase is done in OMI or gems and have this fee directly contribute to buybacks or burning? So, yeah. so it, you know, it, instead of 8.5%, it's, it's 9% or it's, it's 10% capped. And then that extra percent, that's not the 2.5% going back to you guys or the 6% going to the licensor is just like a, a fee that automatically burns only regardless of whether you transact in gems, the gems are used, you know, as a form of buybacks and, and whatever. And then the OMI just gets straight up burned. Like, as yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> again, all, all very real possibilities. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know if you remember the uproar when we had to add the the Marvel and Disney license or fee, right? The extra six right. six and a half percent. So, you know, it gets into a bit of a messy game if you just keep stacking fees on top, yes. right? And, and obviously, then it gets passed on. People up the price of their collectibles so that you know, so that they get what they receive. But if I'm a new user to the platform, and, and we really have to think about this people joining us in six months or 12 months or, or beyond and I come in and I don't know what OMI is and I'm making my first transaction and now I'm losing 10% of that sale because it's going to the licensor and this is getting burnt and this is going out. So 
I think 10, I, I mean, I think eight and a half percent is high. Right? And, oh um, yeah. And, and it is, but I think that that's the, and that's the difficulty, right? Like if I buy a common 32 edition, 32,000 edition collectible right now on the drop, you know, I, if I go to sell it, I'm probably selling it for a loss even before fees, just because there's so many additions relative to the amount of users that may want a specific drop. But I think as we onboard, you know, more users, if we have, I mean, uh, the, the numbers came out recently, you know, 2 million downloads and in, in about 1.1 million active users per month. I, you know, I think in six months, we're going to look at this and we're going to say 32,000 additions is, is nothing, right? Like that's not even going to exist. So I think, I mean, as a perfect example, I own the amazing Spider-Man, uh, Secret Rare comic book. There's only like 600 editions of those in the world. I got it on the drop for $7. So if you charge me 10% to sell it and I sell it for $10,000, I mean, yeah, it sucks that I lose $1,000, but I'm still making $9,000, right? Mm -hmm. And and if I'm going to be paying that 8.5% fee anyways, like that's just, that's become standard. So I think you're right. Like once you start to add in, you know, fees, where do you stop? But yeah. I think if, you know, if it was every single transaction and people really saw um, the effect that it was having on the circulating supply, like almost on a daily basis. Cause I think that, I think that's one of the biggest, and I don't even want to call it a problem because it's not a problem, but it's, it's people see all of this only daily burn, but they're not seeing it affect price action is because most people don't understand that that's not actually in circulation. So by implementing these measures to directly impact the circulating supply, you know, I, I think if everyone had to pay 1% more to see everyone win, I think that that's something that most people would stomach. And for the people that wouldn't, then you sell it 1% higher. And what's, you know, 1% of $100 is $101. Like if you're going to spend $100 on something, you're going to spend 101 on it, right? So Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, what was the intention with the, you know, the burn fee of tier two and tier three, right? So that we are taking out of circulating supply to reach those levels. You're obviously already staking to take more out of circulating supply. And as you said, I mean, if we're at a million or 1.1 million users now, maybe three or four by the end of next year or, or right. potentially higher, but even though they seem like small percentages now, it will start to have that that amazing rolling effect, right? And, and, yep. and kind of that's the tact I think was better to take, try and, try and you know, obviously affect the circulating supply without it being so high that people don't want to use the token to, to transact. And as that user base grows, as that user base sees the OMI token in the platform, um, and and hopefully those staking tiers incentivize them to use it. That burn rate will increase anyway, uh, without without people feeling like we're just like taking money out of their pockets at every turn. You know. No, and, and I agree, and that and that's where it all comes down to that balance, right? So so I agree with that. Maybe adding more fees isn't the best idea. It's proposed by the community, so obviously you guys will be able to to digest that and kind of make that decision. So uh, another large portion that I've seen. So obviously making Omi to NFT available to everyone was the the main thing that kind of came up with everyone. And then the second one that I saw wasn't just only the NFT available to everyone, but more staking tiers as a form of accessibility for getting in. So, um, you know, if you're watching this for the first time or you're watching it back afterwards, currently version one only has, or 0 0.1, only has three tiers. It's either 1,000, 5,000 or $10,000 entry. And you can uh, burn some OMI as a fast pass to gain it earlier access to each of those tiers. So um, yeah. any any thoughts on that, on the amount of tiers that, you know, a lower tier, a higher tier, anything like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, let's discuss it, right? Because because this is definitely the feedback that, that we wanted to get. Um, we did throw around the idea of a higher tier. Um, personally, I, I it's hard, right? I, I know everybody, we're all in different countries, people are in different financial positions, all of those kind of things. I don't agree with a lower tier than a than a thousand dollar tier. Um, I understand that that will be unattainable for some people, um, but the idea is to incentivize you to amass that much money to 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 be able to stake it, right? And and whether that comes from, you know, the way that you interact with your collectibles, if you can sell some collectibles and then go and use that that profit, you know, now that the MTL is coming in, you'll be able to take that money, buy your OMI, and and do it that way, right? And and yeah. looking ahead you'll be able to buy your OMI through the MTL, you know, when, when those integrations are there. So it, it becomes more accessible at that at that point. Now, a higher tier or a few higher tiers, yeah, I'm, I'm more than open to discussion, but the main point I've just seen people say is make whales lock up their tokens, you know, like make them stake more, $50,000 or, or whatever, yeah. which is all well and good, but like... <clears throat> what do you give them? What do you give them, right? Yeah. And, and what do you give them 
that doesn't completely imbalance the system. Because if you then have people with the biggest bags gaining the biggest advantages every week or every drop, it becomes very top heavy, you know, and 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 exclusive and and all of those things, uh, and and makes those levels more unattainable for people if if the same sort of core group are, are taking advantage of all of the features. So it's it's definitely something we're open to, you know, and, I would, and I'm more than open to people suggesting what they would think is fair, you know, yeah. and I would love to get that from people who don't have fifty thousand dollars worth of OMI, you know, or, or whatever. Yeah. And, and people that do, right? Because, yeah. I mean, let's be real. Everybody wants the most advantages for themselves and their position, right? And, I mean, that's that's completely expected. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's the balance. That, well, that, that's the hardest part of, of adding sort of those higher staking tiers. Now, maybe, you know, there's a lot of people with big bags that would just hold it in their wallet anyway, you know? So maybe for that, we can offer some sort of maybe not branded collectibles or branded IP because... You know, anything that we give away like that is a company expense as well. So you kind of have to limit that. Um, so, yeah. So I have a couple because I, I pulled community suggestions together. So I'll throw mm -hmm. a couple of them out. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, we don't have to throw out, you know, what price tier and anything like that, what that would go into. I mean, that's a, that's a high level conversation, but just some ideas for, you know, some options that I think people may uh, be willing to stake for. So uh, mm -hmm. sh uh, shout out to Jake Donnelly. He sent me like a full document. So one of the ideas he had was um, uh, for every drop, if you have a specific amount locked up, whatever tier that puts you in, you're automatically entered into a raffle for one collectible. But if you're in a higher tier, it's a it's a higher rarity of collectibles. So you're in the first couple of tiers, you're you you get entered into a raffle, you give you guys give away, you know, one common or whatever. And then a couple of tiers higher, you know, rare, all the way up to, you know, you're the highest tier of staker, which is less people, right? Because less people have more money, and you have the opportunity to win the highest rarity of collectibles. So whether it be a secret rare, ultra rare, whatever the case may be. Um so yeah. that was an option that I, I heard thrown out because you know, yeah. I mean, and look, we do we do absolutely keep that allocation of each rarity yeah. for giveaways and promotions, right? And and at the moment, we're running those sweepstakes and and things like that. Um, but th that's definitely an option, you know. Even if it is just that sort of you know a small like part of that allocation to each tier, um, and as you say, you're you're automatically entered into that. And then obviously, you've got the the only drop raffle where you can yes. then wager your tokens to increase your chances of of that particular collectible as well. So. That's definitely an option. Um, and I would assume it would run in the same way as the drop raffle. You know, maybe you you just, like, you're the lucky chance draw winner. Yeah, you know, and e exactly. And, you know, and, and maybe it would work, you know, it, you wouldn't get access to it immediately. You would have to keep your token staked for, let's say, you know, at least three months. And then as long yeah. as you continue to keep your token staked, you you constantly get access to this this raffle, right? So yeah. it, it's, it's incentivizing people to keep their their tokens staked rather than you know the day before a drop staking their tokens whatever and then 30 days yeah, later I, staking them. i mean just on that you have to stake your tokens for that a lot of time before right. you receive those benefits anyway so okay you won, so, you had... so 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 sorry so i guess to clarify so so there's three tiers the 1000 5000 10000 but you have to pay a fast pass so if i stake you don't have oh, that. okay. So I can oh, pay the ten thousand dollars to get tier three, but I have to keep them staked for three months before I earn the benefits. Correct. Or you can oh, fast pass okay. to earn them from day one. That's the idea of the fast pass. It's a bit of a oh, it's a shortcut. It's a shortcut to receiving the benefits. But if you want to take that shortcut, you have to burn X amount of OMI to get there. So the idea of staking is, yeah, even for T1 benefits, you stake that $1,000 of OMI, you have to wait 30 days with that stake there before you'll start receiving those tier benefits. Right? That's oh, the whole thing. Wow. Okay, That's I yeah. So I, I'll be honest, I didn't even get that from the article. Like I thought right. it was just to skip tier one and two and go to tier three, you had to burn no. $2,500 and then you could just get into tier three if you stake $10,000. No. And even that, you have to progress through the levels as it is at the moment. So if you want to... Get to tier three, you, you start at tier one, you have to burn to get to tier two, you have to burn again to get to tier three. That's the shortcut way to do it because there's going to be so many people coming into this platform in the next well, however long yeah. that will want to take a shortcut, right? Like for us being here at the start or when staking is available, wow. we stake and progress. Okay. But, uh, 
yeah, for someone joining later, if they want to go straight to tier three, well, then they have to burn both levels to get there. Okay, so I'm so I'm looking at the article. So 250, 1250, so 1500. So you would have to burn $4,000 worth of OMI to get immediate access to tier three. And then would I also have to stake 16,000 worth of OMI or would it be 10,000 worth of OMI? The 10, the 10. The staking okay. tier would be the same. It's just the fast pass lets you race your way there. Basically. Okay, interesting. Now, and this was a question that actually came up. So, I I utilize the fast pass or, or whatever, or, or even if I don't, but I, I've staked the only. If I unstake my only at any point, do I then need to restart the process over again, or, or how does that work? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. that's how. Uh, I mean, it's if you're unstaking, you're removing those benefits. That's uh, yeah. Start again is is kind of where that. Okay. That goes. So, you know, this is why, obviously, like I said, it's designed to take as much out of circulation as we can. We just have to make sure the incentives are strong enough for people to want to do it, right? And, and very blessed that we have all the IP that we have. People understand the value of these collectibles and have obviously yeah. seen that value appreciation. So personally, I think anything that can give you an, an edge on other collectors to build your collection, you start to see that value appreciation on both sides of the equation. Interesting. Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know how popular it will be across the community, but I actually really like that because I completely agree, right? It's, it's, you're, you're incentivizing people and, and unlike the MCP, which is meant to encourage collecting rather than just having the most money to whatever, like the longer you hold, the more benefits you earn here. Instead, it's, it's more, if you want to spend the money, we'll give you the features, but really what it's doing is benefiting everyone. Right. Yeah. So I, I actually really like that. That that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, so that covers um, that, and that just that blew me away. So now I've lost my, <laughs> I, I, oh, I've yeah. lost my train of thought. So, so, yeah. so let me let, let me let me throw you a different one because uh, mm -hmm. the community asked this one as well. What's your relationship with snake charming? With snake charming, <laughs> someone someone posted it. So I was like, oh, you're, you're a resident snake charmer. So people want to know what, well, what's your what's your relationship with snake? First time that's ever come up, actually. Well, no, I, it was a bit of an early community uh, joke just because you know, okay. people always came in like a viper and, and tried to hit me with, with everything and I just calmed the storm a little bit. At least that's what I'm going to say publicly. That's <laughs> okay. Fair, fair enough. I, you know what? I, I like that. I like that. So we've established you're open. Uh, you think a thousand dollars is, is likely you're open, but is likely the lowest tier that we will see because at the end of the day, if you're staking a hundred dollars, like, like, what are you really like? That's one drop, right? Like, what are you really going to get as a benefit for staking a hundred dollars? Um, yeah. That makes perfect sense to me. You're open to higher level tiers of staking, but what would the benefits be relative to that? Um, are you open to scaled rewards? So right now, the way that it's designed, it's, it's, you know, 30 days for tier one, 60 days for tier two, 90 days for tier three, or you can unstake early with a 10% penalty. Would you guys be open to, you know, stake $10,000 for three months, you get access to these rewards, but if you guarantee to lock them up for 12 months, we'll give you XYZ extra reward or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess that's in the same vein of the higher staking tiers, right? Because like we could either say, all right, well, you need to stake more for longer or, or stake the same amount for longer and, and then maybe you get access to uh, like a like a, a exclusive Christmas NFT or, yeah. you know, like depending on, you know, we can kind of roll those those sorts of things out or, or maybe, you know, we make some more exclusive staking uh, collectibles or badges, you know, like the same yeah. way we have, you, you'll receive those 3D displayable badges, things like that in your yeah. showroom. We can definitely incentivize with with things like that. Um, and, and I guess at the same time, if you want to lock your tokens up for longer, you can still withdraw them at that 10%. That Learn for you as well. Um, yeah. So, and, and that's another community question that I've seen come up. So we've talked about it. You actually responded to one of my tweets yesterday, but I think it's important to discuss it here. So if I'm in tier three, just 10,000 US dollars worth of OMI, but then OMI goes down 20%. And now yeah. it's, you know, it's down. Do I need to then add more USD worth of OMI to, to main, make sure I maintain that level? Or, or do we know how that will work? Yeah, so I actually had this in the article initially, but uh, Dan and I back and forth a bit before okay. it went. So that was the original plan. Absolutely. If the, if the stake goes down, you have to add to your stake to maintain that tier level, you'll okay. receive an application. Now, I'm not saying that that's not going to be the case, um, but because we know, you know, digital assets are 
they're so nascent. Obviously, they're so volatile at the moment. Yeah. We've seen this huge market correction as it always kind of plays out. So what I think we're going to try and, and design, which would be a better system, is maybe we take a seven-day running average of the okay. total price versus yeah. you know the amount you need to stake. Uh, and maybe at the end of each month, we update that amount. So if okay. I stake this month, $10,000 might be 100,000 OMI. If I was to add, you know, if I was to come in and stake next month, well, maybe ten thousand dollars worth of OMI is seven thousand tokens or seven hundred thousand. You know right. what I mean? That, yeah. That fluctuating value. So, yeah, I think that would be a fairer way to do it, um, and and a more programmatic way because yeah, if I'm staking today and it's worth ten thousand, well, then I get shafted if if the price drops in two weeks' time and I have to add to it. So. I think it will be more a system like that, so it can be a bit more progressive and flexible, um, depending on when you join. Because obviously, the system's designed to take tokens out of circulation, exactly. building things in to deflate that supply. You don't want it to become, again, you don't want it to be a disincentivization. You know? Exactly. No, I think that that makes perfect sense. And then I guess on the flip side, um, I stake ten thousand dollars worth of OMI you come out with some crazy license announcements. I'm not going to make the joke because I already made it once, um, but you come out with some crazy license announcements or the VV verse comes out and people are like, oh dang, like, is, and the price just five X's, right? Like the tokens worth 50 grand now. Can I unstake, pay that 10% penalty? And am I paying 10% of $10,000, which is my original stake? Or am I now paying a 10% penalty of $50,000, which is the current value of my token? Yeah, so it would be ten percent of your stake, right? Rather okay, so whatever it's worth. So if I if the token dropped fifty percent and I want to unstake it because I want to sell it, I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm paying ten percent of that fifty percent fee. The token five hundred percent. I'm paying ten percent of the five hundred percent fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's whatever, because it's staking a token amount. So I think that would you know rather. Yeah, than no, that makes perfect sense. No, yeah. I I agree. And uh, Mr. Trade Vester says uh, name suggestion for a new tier if we have. <laughs> Uh, so there we go i like it yeah. i like it so you know if we're, if we're adding more tiers maybe we uh we run a competition let, let the community come up with some tier names right so, yeah 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 i mean if we, you, uh, the tier names we have came from the community anyway so that's, that's, there you go yeah, it's, yeah, it's there, there you go and uh real talk i didn't forget about your donation i don't know that it'll fit into the conversation but i'll throw it up anyways uh the usps stamp nft was a huge u.s government collab with the comey are there any other government collabs outside of the u.s on the table so not confirm now but you're ex open to exploring we're we're open to every single license that exists <laughs> basically and so real going. talk if you have any you know connections with other government entities you reach out to a comey and you uh yeah yeah you, you, message. yeah that's it Look, yeah. I, I, I do think we're going to continue to see all of these entities in, enter the space right and i think there's um is it the Swiss government? Maybe some someone else has released a few kind of national postal stamps as well as an NFT release. And I think so. Yeah, things it's, like it's, that. It's interesting to see government agencies really, you know, especially the U.S. Like I think people really sleep on, and this is just my tangent for a moment. I think people really sleep on the fact that the U.S. government is actively working to regulate the crypto industry, and I mean like really regulate it. Like they're not messing around. And the fact that you know an entity that is associated with the U.S. government has partnered with Ecomi. And I I think people really need to take a step back and realize that during a time when crypto is maybe not being looked at super favorably, it's like the wild west for a lot of projects. The fact that a government agency and I mean, Disney, come on guys, would partner with Ecomi, like it's not financial advice, but you know, maybe do some research. I mean, there's probably yeah. a reason for it, right? So. Yeah. And, and look, I think it's an easier sell to these entities to enter the NFT space than it is to enter the crypto space, right? Because sure. you know, the NFT space, even though it has been pretty pretty crazy this year, I, it's it's a it's funny to say this, but it's a more tangible product, right? It's it's easier to to kind of explain that to people. People understand that that digital asset space more so than the fluctuating volatility of of a normal cryptocurrency as a, as a currency. So exactly, um, and obviously, like a you know a government entity isn't going to. Uh, they have the US dollar. They, they want the digital US dollar or, you know, a CBDC. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, it's, I think it's easier to create products for entities like that than it is to create a currency for, a, for an entity like that. It, exactly. No, that makes perfect sense. And then, you know, we've seen in the article that the OUP and the MCP run concurrently to one another, but some benefits um, overlap. Um, the MCP Pro, which I, a lot of information hasn't come out about it yet, so I don't know how much you can touch on it, but 
Um, you know, is there any overlap at all with the MCP Pro in relation to the OUP? And like, will there be an, I mean, staking is an MCP reward in the sense that you're staking money for whatever. So like, is is there in any way you could touch on how those two kind of come together? Yeah, I mean, we'll probably need to wait a bit more for um, for a bit more of that overlap, you know, like at the moment, you know, the staking tiers are similar to, to those MCP rewards. Um, the benefit being that staking OMI or, or having OMI lets you double dip. Basically, you know, you can get yeah. double bonuses on your points. You start accruing those more, then you can participate in both the MCP and the OMI drop raffles. Right. You know, so it's, it's all designed at, at helping you to build your, your collections or giving you some sort of edge over people. Uh, as to whether they'll get those benefits for cheaper, I, I don't know the price of the MCP Pro yet, um, but we'll, we'll definitely add some different incentivization mechanisms so that you want to do both, basically. Nice. Or, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. You know, and, but it's the same concept, right? Like if you've got a big bag of OMI and you want to stake it for those benefits, amazing. If you don't, well, then you can still pay for the MCP Pro and, and get the benefits on that side. If you want to do both, well, maybe it gives you the edge that you're looking for. Okay. And then obviously speaking of benefits, I think one benefit that everyone would want access to, uh, what staking tier gets you beers with Reese? <laughs> no, that's staking tier zero. Just bring it. Tier, tier, tier zero. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Um, and then Sunny, uh, thank you for the $20 donation. Uh, give us an option to choose to have Vivi take our leftover change in gems and use it for Omi burns, almost like Acorn uh, takes your leftover change in your bank to invest. I think many people will do it just for the Omi burns. Like, like, you know, one of those like rounding up systems, like you buy something for $27 and 60 cents and it rounds it up to 28 or to the next dollar or something like, is, is that something that could maybe be where, I, I mean, something you probably have to opt into though, right? Cause it's your money. So it'd be something you'd have to opt into. And then I guess that dust as they kind of call it would, would, we'd then use it to buy from the market and burn, you know, from an exchange yeah, yeah. or something like, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a possibility, but be up to the user if, if they want to to round up you know i think the incentivization for those systems are more like it's usually rounding up and buying new tokens not taking your money and spending it to burn tokens so whether that whether people would want to go for that who knows we can we can definitely put it to the community um and and yeah see see what that's kind of see if it makes a difference yeah cool fair enough um so i know that we've had the conversation um about adding incentives, but then uh, an incentive that is likely coming that we haven't been able to touch on as of yet. And it's referenced in the OMI utility article. Uh, you know, why isn't the VVverse announced yet? Well, because you guys haven't said anything about the VVverse. Is it safe to say that we should anticipate additional rewards and incentives for staking OMI once the VVverse comes up? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've said it in, in, in a couple of AMAs anyway, right? So land purchases, avatars, homes, anything like that. Obviously, all those transactions are still underpinned by the token. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, OMI will continue to be integral to to everything that we build. Um, so <laughs> thanks, Omar. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs> one, um, actually, one suggestion I did see for the potential of a higher staking tier is maybe um, early access to land sales in the VVverse. Yes. You know, or, or something like that. So that... That could be a, a potential incentive for the next tier up or something like that. Now, obviously, anyone who can't afford that bag will want to punch me in the face. But, it's, it's, yeah, it's, but, you, know. but you know, and, and I'm obviously so and that is one of the suggestions that I have written down staking only for whitelist access to land in the VV verse and a land bidding slash staking war payable in OMI for the best land. So, I, I mean, I, I definitely think there needs to be a balance, right? I mean, as within you know, the real world as well. Like if you want to buy a house and someone outbids you for a house, I mean, it sucks, but if they have more money than you, they're going to buy the house. Now, should they be able to outbid you on every house and you just not be able to get a house? No, maybe not. That's not what we're looking to, to do, I think. Yeah. But I think there definitely is some merit to, hey, you want to lock up a hundred million OMI worth of whatever USD that is? Yeah, we'll give you first access to land. Sure. Like, you know, I think there's, you know, yeah. even if it's just, a, you know, I, I've thrown the idea around like, uh, like a, a gated community, you know, like if you yeah. want to be near other Omi whales and, you know, even, even as something as simple as giving them a plaque in, in whatever VV city hall ends up looking like to really, yeah. you know, because once you get to a certain amount of money, I think, and, and at least for some of the people I've spoken to in the community that have a billion or more Omi, like 
like legacy plays a big part in this, right? Like if VV becomes even half of the app that I think a lot of us think it will, like your name's going to be out there for, for millions and millions of people. And, and to some people like that, that means like, look, you go, go through New York city, see how many people's names are on sides of buildings, right? Like that has it's meaning. Flex, right? Yeah. It's a flex. And look, I think we've, we've said this before as well, but that might become available to the higher levels of master collectors too. Um, you know, like to, to have those kind of incentivizations. And obviously these levels of staking Omi now can help you build that master collector because you're getting bonus points up your level. So, I mean, I mean it's, we're creating a bit of a competition between collectors, which I think is really fun, you know, and a really fun way to kind of move up up those levels, especially yeah. if that that result is, you know, that, that you can get access to those sales. So on the MCP side, you know, you're trying to level up to get there. Maybe on the Omi side, we can make something like that available so you can kind of pay to play yeah. but it won't necessarily be you know just boost your master collector level to the top but by staking x amount of omi yeah maybe you get the same access to that sale or or something similar for sure and and you put out uh, a great response to this uh last night and i retweeted it but because we have 560 people here now why can or why will we likely not see omi staking for omi on the vvf yeah, so OMI is a utility token, right? And, and I think I said this on that tweet, there's typically three types of fungible tokens, right? Utility tokens like OMI has a specific use or has always been designed to have a specific use. Payment tokens, currencies, and securities. Now, <clears throat> to actually earn an APY on a, on a token like that, it's generally a security, right? Now, ETH, when you stake, let's take Ethereum, for example, people understand you can stake Ethereum or Solana or, or things like that you're actually earning new issuance when you're staking those tokens, if you're actually staking it to the network, right? It's not, it's not paying you out like an interest rate or anything like that. New tokens are being minted. And as a reward for your stake, you're receiving some of that for supporting the network. Uh, exchanges, when you deposit your tokens into an exchange and they pay you an APY, it's because they're putting your tokens to work, which is typically lending it out to traders or other exchanges, or they use that as a base of reserve collateral, which lets them lend out other tokens or create their own token, you know? So that's how they're able to, to pay you an interest rate or an APY or, or all those things. For us, the way that our company is registered and because the token has always been a utility token, if we were to pay you out in, in OMI just for holding it out of circulation, it completely changes the classification of the token, invalidates literally everything we've built and everything we've built around. Uh, and and would that would be the end of OMI, basically. You know, it would open us up to litigation in every jurisdiction that the app operates in. Um, it's just not a thing, Sorry. frankly. Uh, Frank, not a good idea. <laughs> not a, not a good not, idea. Not a, not a good idea. Really, like it's, yeah, all, all of those things, it's, it's, it's just not an option, you know. Um, I've also, you know, people are always suggesting, well, why don't you, how about we stake it and then you give me another token and then I can do something with that and, and all of that. It's like, Guys, it's hard enough managing one token. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. seriously. <laughs> these things. Uh, Alan says, hi, Reese. Any plans for NFTs from the horror genre? So we don't necessarily need to say specifically horror. If you want to get into that, that's fine. But I, I know that David, because he's so good at keeping his mouth shut on <laughs> public forums, we love him for it. Um, you know, we've, we've heard that we, we could be expecting some, you know, new license types and, and some new licenses that aren't currently announced in the next little while. Um, any general thoughts on, on, you know, whether horror or something like that might be good, might be a good fit for the. Yeah. 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 It's actually a request. We get more than I would have anticipated oh, wow. um, for more, more horror content. So obviously we have uh, chaosium and, uh, and we'll continue to work with them, but um, you know, through the license partners we already have, there's obviously a lot of uh, merchandising and content opportunities from horror films horror games, things like that. So it's, yeah, it's definitely a genre that I think we will uh, continue to explore. Fair enough. Uh, and just a heads up, guys, this is just more of like a PSA for everyone. Uh, I've seen a couple of people posting it in the chat, but shout out for Chris for the donation kind of jumped up uh, at me there. Apparently IMX appears breached right now. So if any of you guys are, obviously VV has not migrated to Immutable, so you're not going to see any VV collectibles there. But if you guys are buying any collectibles native to Immutable, you know, gods gods unchanged and anything like that just be mindful to do some extra dd if you're going to be doing any trading on that platform this weekend i don't i can't verify it i don't have any context behind it but i've seen enough people 
post about it. And Chris is a fellow content creator and he's not the type of person that's going to say something like that if it's not true. So just be mindful guys that that, that might be an issue. Um, yeah. Um, I might just jump in there too. I did see this morning uh, for anyone trading on OpenSea, a lot of people are starting to add that little blue check mark to their display picture rather than it being the actual verification of an account. Um, I think I saw it with MetaKey and MetaCrew or something like that. Okay. So I know the NFT space can be exciting and everyone feels like they need to make transactions straight away, but please always, always just check these accounts, make sure they're verified because you know it's 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 too easy. There's, there isn't a whole team of people monitoring everything at OpenSea. It's too hard now with, with all the user generated content um, and things slip through the cracks. So just same advice for anything in crypto. Do your due diligence, please pay attention. For sure. Uh, shout out to Henry Peg Luca, the low collection, mint collection expert there. Uh, you don't have to say if you own any of the collectibles, but are you, you like collecting on the app? I, I can imagine that you probably did pretty well for yourself before uh, we hit 2 million downloads and 1.1 million users. And now I'm sure you struggle to get drops just like the rest of us. But uh, I haven't landed a drop in about two and a half months. Um, <laughs> I was doing well when there was about 10 people on the app. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, um, yeah, it hasn't been, hasn't been a successful run for me. Um, so no, I don't own any secret rare comics, unfortunately. Um, but right. yeah. I I, so, so I have to ask you just cause I have you here. Um, I, I know that, you know, people say, oh, well, they only expected 65,000 downloads by the end of the year and whatever. That was your, that was your, that was your goal from a business perspective, but you personally, I mean, having been in this project for pretty much since the beginning, have you, like, did you ever see that this happening? Like, I mean, it's easy to look back now and say like, yeah, well, obviously they had all the IP, they were going to be successful, but I mean, did, did you ever think that this was good? And I mean, we're still at the beginning, but did you ever think that this was going to happen? Like this? Yeah. The, the, you hope for it. You hope for it, right? You build for it. You hope for it. Um, but most people don't, you know, we were grinding at this for three, three and a half years. Nobody knew what an NFT was. No one cared what an NFT was. You know, we've even heard like Jeremy Padawa say, you know, like when he was first presented with it, he was skeptical. When we first went to Al, he he kind of, he actually made the great, a great choice. He went off and learned about it. You know, he spent six months with his, with his team learning about the opportunity before he came back to us and said like, yeah, let's do this, you know? So wow the whole journey was a grind and a battle to get there to the point where when we launched the app, we were like, I've got no idea if anyone's going to buy these things, you know, and, and people didn't really for the first few weeks, you know, it was, it was most of our community that, um, that was established at the time that was only that two, two and a half thousand people that, that started to buy things. Um, so yeah, it was, you always hope for this, you hope for this growth, you hope for yeah. that. You can, Right up until we launched the app, we couldn't talk about any licenses. You know, Toki Doki was the only one that was out there. So you're trying to educate people on this new technology, sell them on this idea and get them to believe in you and what you're doing without actually giving them any info or content. You know, that was that was the hardest part of the journey. So so, so even when you were going to other licensors, you guys couldn't like like whenever you know, you couldn't be like, as an example, and I'm not saying you had it at this time, but like, public, you, you, could, you couldn't go and be like, oh, we have Disney, you should sign with us. Like you had to yeah, like- Yeah, so I mean, obviously at the time we didn't have Disney when, when we were first kind of doing right. that. So no, between licensors and, and anyone under NDA, the, the, you know, in that setting, yes, I think Dan and Dave shared, we have this, we have this. And that's oh, actually, okay. that's what got the snowball rolling, right? So it was like, We'd show them the app over the couple of years and, and build the dream. And, and eventually we could kind of say, well, you know, DC just signed with us. And then we see them three months later and it's like, well, you know, Ron English just signed with us and, yeah. and things like that. So they could see that uptake uh, and that interest, but it was always behind closed doors. Um, yeah, publicly, we, we couldn't say anything. You know, the first token sale we did in 2018, I mean, people were just, it was based on <laughs> what we told people, not yeah. not we share, you know, and, and it didn't work, right? It, it didn't work out that way because it wasn't, there wasn't a strong enough, uh, not use case, but there, there just wasn't strong enough belief in, in yeah. the industry. Well, the, I don't think the market was there for it at that time. Like like outside of CryptoPunks and, and CryptoKitties, which aren't, you know, they're not what they are today, right? Like they existed, but they're not what they are today. I think outside of that, I mean, you guys were probably one of the first to, to kind of onboard this kind of NFT concept and, and relate it to, 
you know, mainstream. And I, actually, I would say you guys are the first to onboard for the mainstream because I mean, 10,000 editions of one type of a collectible as a community is not mainstream. That's that's built to be a community of one specific thing. So no, mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it's pretty incredible to see how far things have come. And I know, you know, people will always say you guys aren't moving quick enough, regardless of what gets done and, and what time frame it gets done in. But uh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, crazy. Even, even earlier in the year, you know, like I was the one throwing it out saying like, yeah, maybe we'll have a million users by the end of the year. To get here and actually have a million users is just as mind blowing to me. You know, it's 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 kind of insane. And, and obviously we've rebuilt the app time and time again all through the year so that it can right. scale and, and build better systems and, and improve all that back end processing um, to enable us to to facilitate that many users and, and beyond, you know, so. Yeah, it's pretty exceptional to be this product. I think we removed the invite code on the 24th of December. So it technically hasn't been live to the public for 12 months yet. Oh, wow. So okay. to, have more than, to have more than a million active monthly users. And that means, you know, like they're, they're opening the app at least, I think a couple of times a month. And then 75% of that is opening the app three to four times a week or more, right? So like wow. that retention and engagement rate is off the charts compared to that's that's a crazy of other things. So it's um well when you think when you think about that, that's that I mean that's basically a baseline of 50% retention. And when you think about, you know, when you've really only rolled out, you know, five to ten percent of what this app is truly going to be and you're already getting that level of engagement, I think, you know, it, it it's easy to blame, you know, the app not running as smooth as it could or bots or other things. And, and don't get me wrong, th those are still an issue and may always be an issue. But when you really think about, you know, I, I think I think Dan released the statistic that I think it was like 150,000 people were competing for the partner statue and there was 4,300 editions. So, I mean, you had, you know, a one in 30 chance of getting it or whatever it was. So when you really think about that, like that's pretty, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, not that it was necessarily designed this way, but the way the human nature works, once you've made an investment into something, whether it's purchasing a collectible or you do land that $7 comic that's now worth two or $3,000. I mean, you're in. Like, what, what else is giving you that opportunity, you know? So well, it, that's it, it. That's it, it becomes that, that sort of thing. And then, as we all know, I mean, this, this has truly spread from word of mouth, right? from content creators like yourself and the rest of the fam and everybody doing it from a point of fun and enjoyment, but but wanting other people to to see the opportunity to, you know, and, and to see that community bootstrap to to bring the product to where it is now is is yeah, couldn't couldn't have predicted. No, it's 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 incredible. Um anime, I didn't forget about your question. It just didn't fit in at the time. I'll always go back to you guys. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. Um is it possible for me and my girlfriend to both use the same Wi-Fi and not be flagged? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. This is why um you know, a lot of people suggest that we ban IP addresses mm -hmm. um, if we see too many accounts on. But like you've got families living in the same house that are all using the same Wi-Fi to VV. You've got office towers. I know tradies who will literally go for Smoko, which is, you know, your morning tea break, <laughs> just, to, just to hit the button. For, you know, but like it, you, can't, you can't just wipe those things out. So, you know, using the same Wi-Fi is, is completely fine. I don't know if it'll improve your chances if you're both using the same Wi-Fi. <laughs> <For sure>. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah uh, so, I mean, obviously, I'm rocking the VV merch right now. You're rocking the VV merch right now. When, when are we going to see an official website come out? When are you guys going to be selling some merch for the Omi fam in the VV? I don't, I don't think we will. I don't, I don't oh, particularly, you know, like maybe down the line we'll make those light boxes available or, or things like that. Um, I personally would prefer to give away the merch, you know, than, yeah. than, than be selling it. Like, I think that we all, frankly, contribute financially enough to, to what we're doing here. Um, so, yeah, I'd prefer to be able to give those away. Um, nice. We gave away 1,500 shirts at DesignerCon. Wow. Uh, things like that. So, you know, at, at events and, and if we're running special promotions, that's kind of when this stuff will be available. Um, but if we've still got a bunch sitting in a warehouse somewhere, yeah, maybe we'll do some weekly giveaways with them as well or, Nice. That's awesome. So uh, another suggestion, circling back to the OUP that I've seen, I know, I know we're at an hour here, so we maybe for guys that are watching, we maybe got about 25 minutes left with Reese. I know he's got some, some plans with his family today. So once again, thank you so much for taking the time. So, um, we've talked about more staking tiers. We've talked about, uh, you know, adding higher prices and whatever. What about, cause I know with the master collector program, uh, you earn points, but the actual, 
rank that you are fluctuates based on how many people are in each tier. Was there ever a thought put into, you know, you stake $10,000 worth of OMI, but then, you know, 500 people stake more than $10,000 worth of OMI. So you're not actually in that tier. You need to stake more, like to constantly gamify and incentivize people to stake more, or does that kind of become a slippery slope? I think so. I think so. Especially because you're locking your stake, right? So it's, it's kind of, you were this level when you chose to lock it, it's a bit unfair that now that, you know, an extra hundred people are on that level that they just kick you out of the tier, you know, whereas yeah. the the master collector is more of a, it will be in a state of flux based on your activity, your collecting, you know, like a, whatever you're sharing, like all of those things. And, and because there's a few mechanisms to change those levels or raise those points, I think it makes more sense on that side than it does on the, on the army side. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense to me. I, I, think, I think where that more so comes from is, is we look at the top... Um, like hundred or so wallets. And we know that, you know, those many people have more than a hundred million OMI. So it's just, it's just trying to come up with once again, those strategies where we can encourage the highest tiers of OMI whales to lock up their OMI. Because once again, you know, one whale that has a billion OMI is the equivalent of a thousand people that have a million OMI locking it up. Right. So, you know, if we have to give them an additional incentive that, you know, doesn't disincentivize everyone else, but that really makes it worth it for them to lock up, you know, a million plus dollars worth of OMI, then, you know, I think it's always a good thing to, to yeah, explore. Yeah, exactly. And like we said, I mean, most people are just holding their tokens anyway. So, you know, if, if we can incentivize them to, to hold them for an allocated amount of time, or at least then we know this much is out of circulation for six months or 12 months or, or whatever it is, you know. And so, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I definitely want to build in more, more tiers if we can or more incentivis- incentivization mechanisms for that but um it's just we just have to find the right balance you know and and look maybe we put those things to the community maybe we do some votes and and see what people think so that yeah. at least people can't blame me if it's a different story <laughs> well and i think it's important to know too i mean obviously you're here live with me now but uh i believe and i'm just trying to find it i, I don't know that i'll be able to pull it up on screen but within the omi utility program article you guys have a link to a yeah, a feedback form. It's right at the yes. top. So for those of you guys that are curious, you know, if you feel as though your voice is me, like it's great to, you know, tweet at Reese or tweet at some of the content creators or whatever. But remember that at the end of the day, like they provide a formalized route for us to, to utilize. So nothing wrong with, with putting it out to any of us and we'll take it in when we can. But, um, you know, fill out that feedback form because it, I mean, this is this is living proof that the team is interested in hearing what we have to say and, and, and they're taking the time out to, to get that feedback. So make sure you're providing it because that's how we all win and we all get the best program. So- exactly right. Exactly right. And and to anyone who has submitted that feedback already, like big thank you to, uh, to all you guys. Thanks for listening to this as well. It, it definitely makes the dissemination of information much easier. On that note, I will say if you're filling out that feedback form, please make sure it's feedback. Don't, don't fill out that form and tell me that you've lost your password or <laughs> that you yeah. can't you can't because send that to support yeah the mcp feedback form just became a bit of a forum of of that so uh, you know send us some real suggestions we'll absolutely yeah. Them. um yeah that's what it's for fair enough and i've trolled you enough so i felt it was only right to pull this comment up so you may not even know this and i know some of my audience does but for those of you that don't i did get the secret rare amazing spider-man uh ultimate animated collectible on drop a few months back and paper handed it uh at sixteen hundred dollars and sold it uh for those of you that don't know it's worth about seventeen thousand gems right now but seventeen thousand dollars um Mm -hmm. so people have joked that they're starting a a gofundme which does not exist by the way if anyone (laughs) do not like if someone sends you a link and says hey we're don't it it's not real it's a joke but thank thank you for that (laughs) (laughs) that was that was good uh dd with a good question uh not necessarily specifically related to oup but can you specify what exactly will burn omi from the circulating supply and what uh burns from the reserve yeah. So any gem transaction burns from the reserve. Right? So so that, that will still exist for master collectors, the MCP, anything like that, as it does right now. Right Now, the link to that is the buybacks, which David mentioned in the AMA last week. Everything else, so if I just look at this um, at our actual OMI utility program, uh, anything on the OMI side is designed to burn. Right. So those, those yeah. tier fees, if you're tier two or tier three, um, any sort of market transaction there will burn you know, 0.5% or 
If you want to fast track, you need to burn. If you want to withdraw your stake before that staking time has elapsed, it will burn tokens. Um, and, and, and should we expect those... I'm assuming it's an automated process facilitated by the smart contract once we're migrated to immutable, but should we expect like, like if I make a purchase of a thousand dollars and I'm tier two, so 0.5% is burnt. Should I expect that whatever that is, $25 or whatever, should I expect that to like immediately be taken out of circulation or is it a form of buyback that is done manually? No, it'll, it'll just go straight to the burn wallet. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. So so we could conceivably, and once again, not financial advice, not confirmation, but once this program is rolled out for staking, if a bunch of people conceivably burnt $2,500 worth of OMI to get access to tier three, that one day we could burn, I mean, I'm not going to throw out a crazy number, but like 100 million OMI or something, right? Like yep. directly okay. from circulation. Yes, correct. And oh, wow. while okay. concurrently locking up that $10,000 worth of OMI for 90 days. Wow. So it's... Hopefully, we're going to see a nice big swing of tokens just go, whoop, see you later. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's why, I mean, it's very clear that you guys are, are taking the time to consider it. And once again, to reiterate to people, because it, it happened the same with the MCP. Like, you put it in bold, like, don't make life-altering decisions when the article comes out. And then everyone makes life-altering decisions. Like, version 0 0.1, guys, not even version 1, 0 0.1. Like, this is, yeah. So just, yeah. just that's why we're given the feedback, right? So, and it's... Exactly. And, and yeah, it will continue to evolve, right? As we roll out the VV verse and really as we collect some app data, right? Like it's, it's all well and good to, for us to sit at this end of it and make assumptions about how people will interact and use the token, right? But then maybe that changes once you can buy the token through the MTL. Maybe it changes once you can swap ETH for the token through the web platform or, or whatever development builds in, right? And, and the idea is that over time, these programs, both the MCP and OUP, do become more comprehensive, you know, and, and offer more, more ways to get ahead or more benefits or more incentives or, or whatever that mechanism happens to be. So, yeah, please don't, don't go and change your entire life based on, on the very first version of this article. Yeah, For sure. So obviously we're not speaking timelines here, but uh, realistically, what should we expect to be integrated, you know, re in, in Obviously, no guarantees, but in 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 what order? Like, will we will we see IMX before MTL, or is that likely to come after? Or yeah, so they I mean they're happening concurrently, right? So the MTL is okay. being tested now. That's that's a separate thing to IMX. Right? IMX is more underpinning. MTL is a feature. Um, so so they'll probably happen at the you know they they're both in progress now. Um, as soon as the IMX, as soon as we remint on IMX. Uh, and that's all stable and everything's accounted for and, and all of that stuff because obviously we're now attributing two and a half million NFTs to people's accounts or, or more, right? So it has to kind of, it's all been built. So, it, you know, it, it'll, yeah. it'll be fine. But it's it's one of those things that we have to make sure is fine and stable and we're now running on a new chain and all those transactions are taking place. Um, then we'll, we'll uh, start to put out the information about the token swap as well because okay. everyone will need to, to be aware of that. Uh, and I think the most immediate development after IMX will be opening interoperability of, of some of those collectibles. Nice. Um, so that's one of the first things. We need to move to IMX and migrate the token. Um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. We need to move and migrate the token before we can, oh, for the new wallets, right? We, we need everybody to have those, the new OMI wallets within the app um, before we can start sort of developing the 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 portions of the OUP and things like that. Fair enough. So, so we, we should expect a, a, a form of, of rebuild to the app or, or refactoring in the back end once we migrate over before those programs can be rolled out in their entirety. Yeah. Yeah. And now the master collector program has been built in, you know, or, or not all of it, but okay, we, we've always had that in the plans, you know, so a lot of that dev work is actually kind of together. Um, it will just take some, some additional work to, to finalize and, and bring that together. But uh, nice. And so the last one, the hairline disappearance, based on yeah. this receding, and maybe by the end of 2022, I'll be shaving this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, obviously, everyone's liking, loving the licenses that are coming out on the app recently. Uh, do we have any updates on some of the OG licenses? Should we expect some of those to start dropping again at some point or any yeah, additional yeah, I think, series? I think there is some more DC stuff on the way, um, which we'll find soon. I, I probably can't reveal anything else, or Alex will kill me. Yeah. Um, you know, but we do have um, 
you know, Christmas is coming up. I think we're going to do some fun things for that. So sort of yeah. similar to what we did for Halloween. Really start to get those seasonal events into into rotation nice. alongside the content um, and, and release some fun stuff. Yeah. Awesome. You want to you want a lava lamp for a James Bond Ultra Air poster? <laughs> 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 oh, I love the fan, man. They just come up with the most, <laughs> most creative things. To, yeah. Um, I think this is a good one. Shout out to Cameron. Uh, any plans to boost security on the app as we expand? Two-factor authentication or things of the such? I want my BB Vault to be the real deal. Yep. So uh, there's already 2FA. Yep. Uh, email, email 2FA. Um, you know, and, and that was a huge scramble to get that in at the start of the year when, when things were expanding. Uh, we definitely always had plans to build in like a, the Google Authenticator, 2FA, Authy, okay. things like that. Um, I mean, I don't know that it offers you anything different to to the email 2FA if you've got access to to phone and, and things like that. But um, but as an option, yeah, I, th I think we'll put it in. But once we put in that email 2FA, you know, that kind of eradicated any sort of yeah. security issues there anyway. So it's not in terms of the priority list of things, I think it's sufficient for now to- Yeah, to... no, I, I agree. The only thing I can think of that the phone number would be more beneficial for than the email is that someone could access your email anywhere in the world, but it's more difficult to access your physical device with the number popping up on the phone, I yeah. think. I'm not techie that way, but yeah. No, and that's a good point. Like you said, we already have 2FA. Uh, can we expect the ability to trade and DM users on the VV app relatively hashtag soon? Uh, DMing users will probably be, will take a while. I think because we've basically got to build in a messaging system or, or that kind of thing. Um, probably easier to do with the the web platform, I guess. But we definitely have designs on on you know moving towards that space where you can have your friends and you can contact them and and that thing. Uh, trading, I think the first trading feature we're building or it's in development is a direct trade sort of feature. So if I wanted to sell something to you, Foster, and we we connected outside of the app, well then yeah. I can look at and you get the you get a redemption code or, or something like that. So you're the only person that can actually see that listing, and then you can you can buy it through the app. So I think that's kind of where it'll start as a bit of a you know we we can choose to just trade with each other, and then eventually, thanks to Immutable, you'll be able to trade you know like two or three of this card for one of this card or whatever it is you know. Yeah, and I think that that's going to be awesome. So you so you're basically saying eventually we should be able to trade full sets. So I have the entire we had the serial killers drop come out today. I have the entire serial killer set. If I if you reach out to me and say hey, I want to buy your full set, we we do the DM thing and I I send you the redemption code for that and then you pay me the gem and then the full set just gets transacted. Correct. Yep. Fantastic. Yep, yep, yep. Fantastic. Um will some collectibles ever get utilities? For example, Marvel Mighties getting used as characters in a game. Yeah, so I'm not going to say you'll use them as characters, but you know, holding those sets or owning those things will more than likely give you exclusive access to something in the VV verse. You know, if there's like a Marvel Mighty's experience or a world, or you know, maybe the the door just isn't open to you if you don't hold that collectible. But if you want to go and, and you know do that, you go and pick it up, and then and then you you can access that. So I think you know, once the VV verse is really live and open and running, that's that's where those sorts of features come in. Nice, nice, makes sense. Um, Malinay says, not OUP related, but for the record, do you know if MTL will be one gem for one USDT? Yeah, there will be some sort of fee, an MTL fee or, or whatever. So, you know, obviously there'll, there'll be some sort of transaction there. Um, but yeah, that's that's absolutely the point. Yeah, yeah and, and just to clarify Malinay too, it, it, it won't necessarily be USDT because that's the tether, that's the crypto, oh, yeah. right? So it, it's actually going to be in fiat to your local bank account and whatever. I, I think you guys are supporting, what, was it 20 roughly, I think? Local yeah, currencies yeah. or something like that? Local currencies, yeah. And oh, yeah. and eventually it might be USDT, right? Or, or some other stable coin through, through the web platform. I mean, the adoption of digital tokens and currencies is only increasing. People are getting more familiar with that. So, you know, if we can facilitate that, Especially when OMI is ERC20, then it, yeah. I would love to do it. You know, I'd, I'd definitely prefer to, to go have to US. We, no, it makes perfect sense. Have we had any updates or do you know where you stand on um, language integration into the app? I know quite a few people have mentioned that. Uh, they actually believe it's going to be a huge catalyst for adoption for uh, countries that are not natively English speaking. Do, do you have an idea of, of kind of how you guys are planning to scale that and roll that out? Yeah, not not. I can't give you a timeline um, more than anything. Localization is is what it gets referred to as, um, and and it's definitely in the works. The the 
It's not a problem. It just takes a lot more lead time because then it means any update, anything we do, you, you know, you've kind of built this thing for English, then you've got to make sure it's right in Spanish and French and German and, and all of those things. So every single, every new language that gets added to the app extends that development time for, for any sort of update. Um, okay. So it's, it is a bit of a process to, to add that localization. Um, and, you know, the uh, Latino, the Spanish community is probably our second biggest community. But at the moment, most of the adoption we are seeing is in the Western English speaking world. Right. Um, and I think that that will probably remain pretty consistent for a little while anyway. Um, not saying that it's any less of a priority to, to right. get it in. Um, it's just one of those, yeah, one of those things that. Well, and I mean, you're onboarding so many users already without it. It's like, can you, can you justify adding more to your plate relative to the amount of work that you guys already have to do to make sure that the app continues to, to function for the people that are already on it. Right. So, yeah. and, and, but it's good to hear that it's in the, um, in the cards for sure. Joel, Joel says when sports NFTs at NASCAR memorabilia is a huge market, uh, would love a Dale Earnhardt NFT seeing VV on the hood of a NASCAR would be awesome. That actually would be really cool. I would, I would love to see that. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, I know we're, we're gearing up to launch some of our sports vertical soon. Uh, I think David mentioned it last week or, or something like that. I can't even say you heard it here first now. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, no, no, you're, you're right though. That's, it's exciting. I'm excited yeah. for whatever it may be. Um, I saw a comment earlier and I didn't include it and I'm not looking for a comment from Reese on it, but coin market cap does have under the Ecomi token that, and I'm not saying it's true or confirmed, but they do have under that, that uh, Ecomi has the MLB and the NFL license. And I'm not saying those are sports licenses that are coming. I'm just simply making an observation that that is what coin market cap currently has written down. No, whether it's know. true or not, only only time will tell, I guess, right? So, I, don't, I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Where, I don't know where they got it from either. I'm just, I'm just saying it's it's written down. It's there. Yeah. So it's, oh, if they want to plug us, that's fine. <laughs> hey, there you go. Right there, you go. Um, this is a good question. Uh, after OUP rollout, marketing for OMI um, will start. Uh, imagine. So th this person saying marketing for VV is not needed. We're onboarding so many new users. Um, and I would counter that by saying all of those users will be introduced to the OMI token pretty much automatically once that's integrated. So just remember that we have 70,000 wallets right now and we have 1.1 million active monthly users. Every single one of those users is going to be brought into the spectrum of this. Uh, so it's just, it's not even about letting people know that it, is, it exists. It's about showing them the benefits once it's there. Uh, but do you have any thoughts on that that you'd like to? Yeah, I mean, you touched on it anyway. That That is the most direct impact or direct form of marketing that, that we could have, right? You've, you've got people who are already using the platform, understand it, and now you're giving them another way to gain advantages or benefits. Um, so regardless of, of external advertising, I think that's going to have the biggest impact, at least initially. Um, I think people really confuse marketing and, and, you know, I don't know if they're expecting us to see Omi on a billboard somewhere or, or things like that, right? Marketing is everything that we do, right? Every, every touch point, every YouTube video, every, you know, every comment, every retweet, all of that kind of stuff is is expanding the awareness of our, our project, right? But when you see these YouTube videos go out um, from, from influencers or, or crypto personalities, I mean, a lot of that has come from the relationships that I've built with these guys over the last three or four years, you know? And, and now that we're seeing success in the industry, everyone's lifting each other up, you know? So marketing is already, you know, it's happening. It's just not the traditional kind of, you know, for sure. And, and, and you know what? And you're not going to get any better targeted marketing than targeting the people that are already using the app. Right. And that's, that's what's important. Like as, as cool as it was that Floki in you put an advertisement on the side of a bus, like who cares? Right. Like no one knows what that means. Whereas if you're already on the VV app and it's like, Hey, I have this new currency that I can transact in. It's like, Oh, okay. I want to learn about that. Cause I'm already using the app. So yeah. 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 Um, yeah. This is something that I was actually a community question that I haven't focused on yet. So um, renting collectibles, I know it's not available, I think until tier three. Um, mm -hmm. Like, how, So when you rent collectibles, like, are you getting paid in gems? Are you getting paid in Omi? Are you like, yes, are you so earning? And another question too was, are you, if you rent a collectible, are you then earning master collector points for renting that collectible? Hmm, that one's a good question. My, I think same as anything we do once OMI features are enabled, well, and you want to rent your collectibles, you can rent them for OMI or you can rent them for gems, right? The same as kind of being able to transact. So I, I think that will be user choice and that makes the most sense to me. Um, 
so that that's kind of what I would think there. What was the the second part? Uh, it was just about the MCP points. So, so someone had mentioned, ah. you know, if, if I rent, uh, I mean, I'm never going to be able to afford to buy a Donnie. If I rent Donnie, do I get points for the day that I have the Donnie in my account? Or is that just kind of like, Hey, I want to bring it to a cool party. So I get it. Nah, I, no, I, I think the points are designed for you collecting those items, right. For, for having those things. So yeah, renting Donnie might give you access to it, but you don't actually own it, right. You're just, you're renting it. So I don't think that you would get bonus points for that. Fair enough. And side by side gamers, I apologize. I, I did miss your super chat there. Like I said, I, I appreciate all the support, guys. It's just very difficult to balance 530 people and keep the conversation going. This is the first time I've had more than like 100 people. So I really am doing my best for you guys. So um, you. Uh, you guys obviously named tier two uh, O Millionaire and it, it $5,000 or less, but it's 1 million. I mean, that's just a cheeky name. Is there is there really anything more to read into that than that or? No, it's just it's just a great name that came from the community and, and we thought was appropriate to to put in there. Yeah. Makes sense. It's not, yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. no uh, no indication of future performance. Not financial, <laughs> not financial <laughs> advice. Exactly. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> um so Jeff says recommendation have more frequent contests for people to engage with their collectibles and share their collectibles and creations on social media platforms. I'm talking bi-weekly or weekly user generated content is important. I mean, shout out to the Vaultaholics. They do a great job of of, of doing things like that. But uh mm -hmm. yeah, I mean yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree, you know, and, and we have had the VV art show uh, previously. We've had the VV uh, meme competition as well. Now, I think they'll become, I think we, there's another art show coming up uh, that taps and stonks and things have a hand in. Um, so, you know, th those community-run initiatives are, are actually the best way for this to take place, right? It's, it's the community gets puts it together. We'll come in and support it any time, you know. If, right. if anyone wants to run something or, or have a you know, some sort of promo or giveaway, like get in touch with me, you know, because it's, yeah, it's something that we're more than happy to contribute to for that exact reason. Um, to be honest, we've just got a lot on our plate <laughs> to be able to organize these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's it, right? Like you, as much as I'm sure you would like to get back for everyone, I know you're a busy man. And, and so, you know, you take the time where you can get it. And with that in mind, just so you guys all know, we will be doing a Rocket League tournament at some point. Um, Taps is involved. I'm involved. There's a couple other content creators involved. And of course, anyone is welcome to participate, right? It's a tournament involving everyone. It'll be streamed. I'm looking at poking Reese and the team at some point. Maybe we can get a collectible or something for the winners or maybe even you know the merch that they're not going to be selling because we know that that's going to have a form of exclusivity. Uh, I also have some merch that I can give away too. And I would be more than happy to do that as well, right? So um, stay tuned for that. And I think there is a uh, Christmas quiz being organized as well. Um, we did one. That's yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. So K and um, yeah, taps as well. And, yeah, the same yeah. group. We did one yeah. a few months ago. That's where that pink robe photo came yeah. from. Well, yeah, I think I think wannabe champ and K organized that. So good. I'm yeah. glad to hear that that those types of things are happening. Um, good question about the uh, Comey wallet. And uh, I actually did buy one. They were in stock a couple, maybe not a couple weeks. It was like a month and a half ago. And oh, okay. someone texted me. They're like, they're in stock. And I was like, oh, and I bought one. And then they were sold out like two hours after that. But um, do we know yeah. when they're going to be restocked? And um, yeah, so I thought it was six months ago, frankly. Um, but we, I think we've been victim to the um, the chip shortage huge increases in shipping costs all of those kind of things um so i don't i don't have a date but i've just kind of blanketed and said sometime in 2022 now um because i thought we'd have them already now as some of you know we do have licensing rights to brand those wallets so we could have some marvel branded wallets or disney branded wallets oh, things that's like that. so i should i shouldn't even have bought one yet oh my oh, god I, I, I <laughs> Right. And and we definitely still have the the plans to create that as a shelf ready retail product, right? To to oh, buy wow. the wallet and it comes with a redemption for a for an NFT or, or something like that. The system to do that hasn't quite been fully designed yet, um, because we would either have to keep an allocation for those or, or have them set aside. But you know, we definitely we definitely have that in the sites to continue to bridge that physical digital collecting gap. Fair and right. those wallets might become collectible themselves. Right. For sure. Well, with, with 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 how scarce they are and how often they come out, I'd say yeah, they make yeah. a pretty good collectible for sure. Um, Glenn seconds that and says, you know, any wallet updates when we move to Immutable X, i.e., will we be able to hold our VV collectibles that are interoperable, so the ones that are allowed to leave the app? Will we be able to hold those on the wallet? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. The ones that can be sent out. So 
the secure wallet is actually was the first cold wallet that could store NFTs. And this is back when nobody else was doing it. It was 2018, 2019, right. something like that. So you can store and display your your ERC 721s. Once we move to immutable, the same thing is is available. So it's it's much easier to um to store them on the secure wallet then as well. So yep. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then we kind of already touched on this, but Ice-T says, will there be OUP specific drops to buy? Maybe non-licensed or upcoming artists, bronze for tier one, gold top tier. I want a gold VV logo. So any any plans to, to because that'd be great. Because I, I mean, if it's non-specific IP, I, I would imagine logically you guys would be able to burn. I mean, you guys might want to take a percent or whatever, but you'd be able to burn almost 100% of that if it was purchased in Omni, yeah. so... So that's, I mean, that's the accessories, right? That's the point of the accessories, whether it's, you know, your shelves or plinths or things like that. And, and that accessory range will continue to build out, you know, maybe in your home in the VV verse, you buy a lounge suite and a TV and you have your collectibles displaying on those or, or things like that. So any of that non-branded content, you'll be able to buy an OMI and it will all just be burnt. Um, so there's definitely that. Now each tier, you're also getting like your specific badge or, or displayable, you know, collectible in your showroom. Um, but again, maybe maybe for higher tiers, or if you do choose to lock your stake for six months or twelve months, well, maybe then you do get a gold VV logo, or you get the actual VV logo, or the red Omi circle. You know, we can, yeah. we can start to start to create those those extra badges and flexes for your showrooms as well. So, I mean, I, I think it's it's going to be pretty incredible. I think you guys are going to see. Um, and maybe because you're a part of it, you don't maybe not that you don't value it, but you don't see it as much. But I, I think there's going to be a lot of value behind the VV name and, and what what weight that carries. I mean, today it may not be a household name, but I think in you know a not too distant future time, you're going to walk down the street wearing you know VV merch or or have something VV related in your showroom, and and people are going to recognize the value of that. So I, I think that that's fantastic. And and on that VV note. Um, Will we ever be able to display VV collectibles on digital frames, like with the Beeple NFT, for example? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming you mean digital frames in the real world. Um, yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, like like I, I have a picture, kind of. Where is it? This way behind me. Like, could I? Could that be a frame that you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've um, we've definitely scoped out the the current technologies. Now, a lot of them are just kind of a fancy display screen, um, you know, and 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 not quite as elegant as as we would like them to be um so whether we go and design our own or we partner with someone that's making them um will be will be another potential product avenue um but absolutely right like like these some of these things are amazing we're obviously going to get into the one of ones for artworks and things like that um so you know we want to we want to give you ways to display them it is just an intermediary though, you know, because we will be wearing AR glasses and, and that, that kind of technology will eventually become available. So yeah. yeah, I think it will become a matter of, you know, is it worth going through the manufacturing process to create these frames when they might just become obsolete in the next couple of years? For sure. Uh, no, yeah, that, that's... that makes perfect sense. And I know we're pretty much at time, but I just had one more question that I saw stand out in my two full pages of questions I had for you. You've done a great job of answering all of them. And thank you once again, so much to the community for providing all of this. Cause really, I, like I said, I spent like an hour beforehand putting all the questions that you guys had together. Cause I, I'm just one person and Reese is just one person, right? So if we can have, you know, 500 people come together, it's always going to generate better conversation than just two people having a conversation. So um, I know that it had been previously discussed that a percentage of primary market sales would be available in OMI, but the OUP itself is specific to the secondary market. Is that yeah. still in the roadmap or plans or has that changed because of what's coming? Yeah, look, I think that it is. I think that it is. Okay. Uh, we omitted it for now because the core utility is being able to transact peer-to-peer -peer with that with, with the token. Um, but as we, I think it's going to be more a matter of seeing how how it's adopted, how it's used, okay. where that, what position that puts us in as a company as well um, to make those things available. But yeah, it's definitely part of my intention to be able to do it. The only difference being obviously any of those sales, we, we don't want to be in a position where we have to sell tokens to pay licenses, right? Yeah. And so as much as I want that to be one of the primary first things, let's go, it's, we need to find that balance between that and, and obviously not putting negative sell pressure on the token because the whole point of the program is to 
put positive, you know, a positive impact on the token. Yeah, and and I think I think that's important because I've I've seen a couple of people discuss it, and for those of you that that don't know, it's one of the main reasons that you don't see OMI as the primary method of transaction on the platform because if I mean licensors don't care about OMI for one, right? They they want money, so they want fiat, and and secondly, you know, if you buy something in OMI. And then they have to then sell the OMI to generate revenue, to to pay, you know, employees, to pay licensors, to pay, you know, anything to keep the bills running. Like every single time that there's a drop, you're going to see negative price action on the token. So there's I, there's method to the madness, even if it doesn't seem like it at first glance. So it, it's an important conversation to have. And, yeah. uh, you know, yes, yes means no, no. I, I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Do you, can you think of any reasons why the VV fam might have a Merry Christmas or? I can think of a few reasons why the VV fam might have a Merry Christmas. Okay. Yeah. But we'll okay. have to uh, stay yeah. tuned. We'll have yeah. to stay tuned. All right, brother. Well, uh, you know, once again, and for those of you that maybe weren't watching at the beginning, Reese is in Australia right now at home with his family, uh, woke up nice and early to have this conversation with us. So uh, if you guys do get a chance, you know, make sure to give him a thanks when you're when you're speaking to him on Twitter or something next. Uh, absolutely fantastic. This was actually our first time interacting kind of face to face. Um and it, it was a pleasure. I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was nervous because, uh, you know, I've been, I've obviously been watching and listening to you as the main voice kind of of the company since I joined the project back in April. And, uh, and I, I think for what it's worth, at least for me, I think that we're in absolutely fantastic hands. So with that being said, before I sign off, is there anything that you would like to say or share with the community? Any last thoughts? I just want to send the same thanks back to you. Uh, you know, and these are the most valuable things that we can do, right? We can open these discussions, tailor this program for the community and for everyone involved because that's what we're building the product for. So first and foremost, huge thank you to you. Huge thank you to everybody who's tuned in, submitted questions, submitted constructive feedback uh, and, and all of those things as well. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, this, this is how we build things properly, you know, and, and, and to people's expectations. So no, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for your patience too in getting that article out, you know, obviously, Everybody knows we're working as hard as we can, but sometimes there's a lot of things that take priority that we can't publicly talk about. Um, and, and that's where these timelines get pushed out. So just thank you again for your patience. Thanks for your help. Um, and um, we'll all chat in the AMA on Thursday or Friday or whenever that's said, and, and we'll take it from there. Excellent. So I think it's fair to say after all of this, you know, for those of you guys that missed anything, feel free to watch it back. If you're watching it not live and after the fact, thank you very much for sticking with us all the way through it. 500 people the entire time. Absolutely incredible. We have an absolutely fantastic community and I consider myself extremely blessed and fortunate to be a part of it. Uh, I would say it's fair to say it's stay tuned for a version 0.2 at some point, maybe in, you know, a few weeks time, once you guys have had an opportunity to go back to the drawing board, consider some of the options and opportunities. And then once again, another iteration may come out that is not the final product. And we can give some more feedback on that and continue to work towards um, the end goal. So. Absolutely. And we're all writing this story. So yeah. Perfect. And uh, for all of you guys that are watching, thank you so much. If you are not subscribed, please feel free to do so down below. And of course, leave a comment. If you did not get a chance to leave one in the chat, I will be responding to everyone's comments after the stream. Thank you so much for all of the support. I love absolutely everyone.